Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be on the framing series and I think I'm going to pick up where I left off with, uh, I think I left off with the roof um, and I'm going to show you a little bit of why it's it's been taking me so long to get back to this. I've been working a lot on this workbench which um, is designed to just make uh, creating this a whole lot easier but you can see there's some problems in it still but you'll see I'm just adding uh, you know a large number of predefined shapes and the way they work is like for example if we look at this door it has all the ind individual components of a door um, it's missing a few things um, and basically these are you know these are just all cubes or uh, I think in code it's a box maybe I'm not sure it's different in code than than what it shows but the idea being here is that we can um, we can drop a lot of objects all at once that are predefined in length and width so that we don't have to uh, you know constantly um, recreate something as simple as a stud uh, even though it's easy it's you know it's not a hard thing to, to do that but why should we do it more than once and I don't know if I'm sure this has been done in other packages and I'm sure there's commercial packages that do this much better than I could ever hope to but it's not free then is it so um, so some of the problems with these shapes currently is that uh, you know they don't completely work <laughs> they um, they don't serialize uh, and some stuff like that that I really have to look into they um, you know they save and everything but you might run into some trouble so I'd be willing to share this with people if they really want it um, but I'm not going to be able to do much in the way of support or anything because uh, you know it's it's not that kind of thing so but we can use it for our model now all of these all of the things that I'm doing here uh, we've covered in previous videos so you should be able to create this um, and uh, I'll try to I'd, I'd love to stick it all up on my website I just haven't figured out where to put it yet so that's my roof and you see that took a little longer and that's because each of these has their own sketch that calculates all the pitches and whatnot and for example if we look at if we look at one of these rafters and we look at the sketch itself that's underneath it you'll see that it has properties for rise and run um, you know so that's something you can stick in that makes it easier to to uh, just do them quickly instead of having to recreate that all all by yourself so for some reason it doesn't stick it into that part so there's a lot a lot of things that aren't working ridge beam and I, my goal was to create something that would allow me to do a build of materials for a shed or a building or whatever really easily. Um, clearly it's not easy because I had to go <laughs> through all this, but you know maybe it'll make it easy for the next person. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a panel. And so I have a couple of panels to, to find here. And the idea with these is that they, they will sit differently depending on the role. So this one sits in position and hopefully eventually it'll read off a master thing and to get its starting position and its uh, and the slope of the roof but so for now I'm going to show you how to put this one in place um, and we're going to do that with the draft workbench so I'm going to grab draft over here and we're going to use draft move so the first thing we'll do is I'll select the object and then I'll hit move and we'll select the bottom the little corner here so I'm using the end snap tool to get the corner and I'm just going to move it up to right there and that's it so that's you know that's got its corner in the right position now we all we got to do is rotate it so to rotate it, I'm going to select this front face because I'm going to be I'm going to be rotating around this this front surface where the door is, or where this window is and to get it to to get the grid or the working plane to snap to that you click here and you see how it snapped so now let's now let's rotate this let's see if I can do this with uh, without too much moving and zooming. So I'm going to pick that same bottom corner and you can see I can get the bottom corner by highlighting the line at the right place. So that's the center of rotation. That's going to be our starting angle and we're going to pick this line for our ending angle. So let me bring that down. So you just got to be closer to one and then the other. And that's it. That's got our our panel in place. So now I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And I'm sorry I'm not using my keyboard thing because um, it was eating up a lot of CPU power for some reason. So now I'm just going to transform this panel and we'll just set this to four feet. And you start to see how it becomes very easy just to move stuff around and set them in place. So, and I don't like the, where the origin is on this, but it'll be all right for this. 
Now, say we say we were doing a bigger building and we wanted to offset these, you could pop it over by four feet easily or change it to two feet or whatever you need to do. So the next thing we'll do is we're gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a predefined shape and it's gonna be a shingle. So I'm gonna open up another document that I have and that's been work, I've been working on this to create uh, codified objects. So I wanna be able to take an object and just turn it into code. So for example, this has the pad and the sketch uh, let's end this, you know, for, by now, if you've been following this series, you should be able to do the sketch yourself. Um, it's not, not terribly complicated. So you see it like that. And the key is, uh, try to center things in your sketch. It makes it really easy to do a lot of stuff. So my, the origin for, for this sketch is right in the middle of the shingle. So anyway, um, we're going to take this shingle, oops, got some kind of error. And I created a simple shape just for that reason, just so the originating shape had some problems. So I'm gonna copy the simple shape and I'm gonna stick it in here. So we have a shingle and let's rotate it. I'm gonna close this so it doesn't get in the way by mistake at all. And we're gonna rotate this. I think I should be able to transform this. One of the problems I've been having with my workbench is stuff that I transform trans uh, changes back <laughs> so it doesn't stay transformed. So that's, that'll be good at 90 degrees. So to make this into a roof panel, I'm just gonna show you how to do a double array. And this is something you can do with, with the other pieces. So this will be you know, part of how to create the roof, but it won't be the little fill-in pieces and the top ridge and the bottom, thing like that. And maybe I'll do that in another video, but I think um, this will be enough to figure it out. I'm gonna create two arrays. So my first array is just gonna create my offset. So depending on your roof slope, that you'd be doing this differently. Um, but for me, it's going to be, I'm going to go down to the number in X. I'm going to leave the X at 2. I'm going to change the Y to 1 because I'm only going to offset one shingle. Then I'm going to go to the X interval, and I want it. I want the X to be 6 inches over because I want it to be one half a shingle over, and they're 12 inches wide. Each tab is wide. So I want it to be half a tab over, and we can see that that looks good. You can see that tab right there. And then I want it to be five inches up because that goes right below where the, um, up on the Y that is, five inches, not millimeters. And so you'll see that that, so for building when you're doing a roof, you want it just above, you know, just to exceed the top of that cutout. And then, then the next thing we're gonna do is we gotta make it look like it's a shingle and not like one unit. So I'm gonna go on the side there I'm gonna bring this guy back because that's what I'm, I'm gonna rotate this roof shingle and then in the array all the rotations will be will be reflect it'll be reflected in all the items. So I have the item picked. I picked rotate. I'm gonna make this my center of rotation. Actually, I wonder if I can do. I think center would be better or this center. So we'll get rid of those and I should be able to pick a center. That's so uh, well. We'll see what happens and I'll do it as starting angle and. Now that's all weird. Let's try that again. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to pick, get rid of that. We use this as our, oh, I know. Let's put the uh, working plane here first. Now let's do lock the plane. Now let's try center, because I think it should go into the center of this plane. And I'd like to see if that works. So I want to pick, we got that object picked, and it should go in the center of the plane. It's not really the center, though. Oh, I don't know how that's working. All right, we'll do it the uh, way I planned and not the way I thought of in the moment. So I'm gonna pick the end point. I'm gonna use the end point snap and my starting angle. It can be anything along this line. So it's just, you know, that angle. And we'll just put it like right about there. Now, nothing seems to have happened, but when the when this calculates, the whole array will change. So if I, uh, if I get it to calculate, there we go. So that'll probably work. So they're they're not overlapping. I mean, it's not realistic, but it'll be a realistic portrayal. So the next thing we need to do is, um, I can hide this now. I can hide this guy, is do another array. And this time, oops, sometimes it creates a second second array when I click that, I don't know why. Let's get rid of that one. I just need one second array. <laughs> That's confusing, right? So for this one, I'm gonna do nine in the Y direction, That's and I'm gonna do three in the X. So it's three, three tabs wide, they're each 36 inches, so that's like nine feet. Um, so let's let's set the intervals. So the in this case, the X is gonna be, oops, 
Did I do that right or I set the wrong one? Nope, I set the right one. Okay, so the X is going to be um, 36 inches because I want to move both of these over a full three tab. And so 36 inches. And the Y will be will be a full, will be five inches? No, it'll be 10 inches because it'll be two, two of, the, of the distance from here to here. So that should do it. And it calculated for me. And there, and there we have our, our roof. Now, so what we would do is next is I'd create an array that, that fills uh, this with a left-handed uh, uh, half a piece and fill this with a right-handed half a piece. And then we'd construct the top. So I think you can figure out how to do that from this example. So the next thing we'll do is I'll show you how to put the array in place. And this is something that I think it's good to know because uh, it's good to know that you can move the entire array. Um, <laughs> so let's try to do that. So I'm gonna pick, with, with the array selected, I'm gonna pick the Move tool. And I'm gonna try to get the bottom corner of this. And, and you can zoom up while you're in the selection mode. Oh, I gotta turn the plane off. That's why I'm not getting where, I'm not getting my dot where I expect it. So what was happening is that dot was showing up in whatever plane I had selected, which was out of view from, from where I was. And I'm gonna stick it right on the corner there. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is, oops, what happened? There we go, I think I moved it twice. So the last thing I'm gonna do is, um, see if I can get it to calculate. Last thing we'll do is rotate. So I'm gonna put my plane there and we'll rotate, rotate the array. Let's see how this goes. This is a little harder because it's harder to pick the uh, pick the start points and whatnot for the array. So let's do a rotate. I don't know what. Uh, so I just want that corner like before, and and then for the roof for the shingle, I'll, we can take that one's probably fine, and then just go up to this corner up here. You can see how it's rotating the way we want it to. And I think that'll work. Okay, so on with the crash right at the end there. What do you know? So I guess that was good timing for the crash. I'm not sure. I'm not going to repeat that. I think you got to see it. I did notice a mistake. I must have been rotating without snapping the plane because you can see that this got rotated a little bit in the wrong direction. Or I've got two there or something. I don't know what happened there. So, um, so making sure, you know, understanding the working plane is important. And uh, I hope this helps. And uh, thank you for uh, watching my channel. I'm always amazed that, uh, that people like to watch these and continue to watch these. And I hope you get something out of it. Make sure you subscribe if you're not. And, um, and hit, hit the uh, alarm bell so that you get notified when I do an update. And I'd like to thank those folks that have contributed on Patreon. I've got five patrons now, and I never thought I'd get any. Um, thank you. And I'm going to try to start putting names on the screen of people who patron patronize me. Is that the right word? Um, but I'm really bad at that kind of thing. So bear with me. Have a great day.